Good afternoon. My name is uh, Patrick Allen, and I am an interviewer for the Veterans History Project for the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C. And in the so southwest Ohio uh, portion of Ohio, it is uh, done through the Cincinnati Hamilton County Public Library under the direction of Brian Powers. And we have the privilege today of interviewing a World War II veteran at his home at 6632 Stoll Lane in Silverton, which is a suburb of Cincinnati. And we are fortunate to have a, a cameraman, Tom Lee, who is uh, 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 also from a ve very famous veteran family. And uh, we're going to be interviewing Mr. McRae. Now, would you tell us what your birth name is, Mr. McRae? My birth name is Ridicule Horse McCray. That's R I D I C U L E. That's right. But you were you go by Horace? Yes. And uh, when and where were you born, Horace? Cincinnati, Ohio. When were, when was that? Uh, December the nineteen twenty-three. What were the names of your mom and dad? My dad was Hercules. My mother's name was Elizabeth. And your mother's maiden name was what? Elizabeth Watson. And Hercules is H-E-R-C-U-L-E-S? Yes. Uh, do you know where your father was born? In Birmingham, in uh, a place they called Pericorn, Alabama. And your mother? Also, and uh, it was in Brockhorn, or should I say Evergreen. Evergreen, Alabama? Alabama. First date. And uh, your dad, do you remember when your dad was born? You know how old he was? No, I do not remember. Uh, it shows here that he was about 23 when you were born. Yes, all right. And your mom was 22 when you were born. Oh. <laughs> and you were born in Cincinnati? Yes. All right. And uh, what date? Um, we did. What was what was your birth date? Uh, 12, December the 9th, 1923. Yeah. Okay. At at a residence at 1106 East Front Street, Cincinnati, Ohio. Were you born at home or born in the hospital? At home. Um, what What did your dad do as far as uh, his occupation? Labor. And what What kind of Where did he work? What kind of labor work did he do? Well, various jobs, wherever could. Construction. Yeah, construction. How Just about various your, jobs, hard jobs, whenever we could. How about your mother? Did she work outside the home? No, she did not. She was a housewife. All right. Uh, and uh, did you have uh, brothers and sisters? I, as I said before, I have two sisters. I had two sisters. One was Helen Boozer, and the other was Dorel McCray, and both deceased. And Helen was about how old when she passed away? Oh, was Helen once he passed away. About 92? In the 90s. And how about uh, Durrell? She was in her 80s. And the spelling of her name is D-O-R-E-L-L? No, D-O-R-E-L-L. -L. No. And where were those kids born? Were they born in Cincinnati? Both Cincinnati. You a lifelong resident of Cincinnati? Yes, I am. Where did you go to grade school? Fulton School, F-U-L-T-O-N. That was here in Cincinnati? In Cincinnati. What, what part of town was that in? In the East End. Okay. And uh, after grade school, did you go on to start high school? We started high school, yes. And what high school did you start in? Woodward, Woodward High School. Now, you were telling me you didn't finish high school. I didn't finish, no. Uh, when did you drop out? 
Oh, I dropped my eyes. What I guess about? I don't don't recall the date or time. But you were you did you finish the uh, ninth grade your freshman yes, year? Yes, yes, I did. Did you start your sophomore year? Yes, I did. Why was it that you dropped out of school? Where was I? Why did you drop out of school? Oh, I would say need more. I was on the male of the family at that time, and I and with two sisters, mother and two sisters, I had to find some work to to keep them going. You had support. to help. You had to help support the family. Yes. Uh -huh. And what kind of work did you do, Horace? Labor. Just like your dad. Just like my dad. Do you remember any of the people you worked for? Do I remember any of the people? Yeah. No, I do not. All right. Now, eventually, uh, you, you were in the Army. Yes. Right? Yes. Sir. Now, were you drafted or did you enlist? Drafted. When you were drafted, where did you report? At, at the beginning. Where was that? At Fort Knox, Kentucky. Okay. And uh, did you, where did you do your boot camp? Fort Leonardwood, Missouri. How long were you at Fort Lindenwood? Oh, I don't know, but just enough to go through the training. Six or eight weeks? Something like that. <laughs> Excuse me. And what, what were you doing during your training? What were they training you to do? As, uh, as all uh, uh, new recruits coming in, they train, they train you know, to shoot a rifle, or to try to protect yourself. Okay. And all those things. So when you left uh, Fort Lindenwood, where did you go? Well, I went to, from Fort Lindenwood, I went to Chambersburg, Pennsylvania. And my occupation there was uh, as a welder. A welder? Welder. Where, where did you learn to weld? I learned to weld. Uh, I guess during the high school years. Okay. When you were a laborer, you learned to weld? Yes. So what were you welding when you were up there in Chambersburg? Well, various pieces of, of, of equipment. I had to maintain the equipment. Okay. And where, where a, a welder was needed, they would call on me to do the job. Well, that was pretty nice. What, what was your rank at the time? Uh, at the time, I think it was a corporal. How long did you stay there in Chambersburg? I went from Chambersburg and went to Advanced Welding School in Granite City, Illinois. Where was Granite City in relation to Chicago? I, I, I couldn't tell you that. Oh. I was in Granite City, Illinois. And from Granite City, I went to uh, Baltimore, Maryland, where I did additional training in welding. Well, let's, let's go back to Lindenwood. How did you get from Lindenwood to Chambersburg? By bus or train or? Train. Okay, and then from Chambersburg over to Illinois, did you do that by? Train. Train? Yes. And were those troop trains or were they passenger trains? So, uh, in some cases, they're just passenger trains. Okay. Then you went from uh, Illinois down to Baltimore? Yes, I went to Baltimore, Baltimore Maryland. Did you go by it, train? Partner, I went there by train, yes. Was that a troop train or passenger? Yeah, a passenger train. All right. Did you have other uh, Army members with you? No, I did not. Well, did you uh, have time to uh, go back home before you went to Baltimore? Oh, let's see. I got back home. I mean, got back home one time, I believe, before I went to Europe. All those other times that I served in, in uh, uh, various cities around oh. at, during that time. Okay. Uh, when you uh, were drafted, uh, did you have a girlfriend? A friend. A girlfriend. Friends. Oh, you had several friends. All right. Uh, and uh, 
Did you communicate with these uh, friends while you were there in Baltimore? Not too much. Not too much. No. How, how long were you in Baltimore? Oh, just on the, uh, maybe six months. Then where did you go? Let's see, where did I go from Baltimore? Uh, I don't recall when I went after that, after that Baltimore. Well, wh where did you go? Cham you Chambersburg, Granite City, Baltimore. Uh, those, those are some of the places I, I attended. Well, you eventually went to Europe, didn't you? Yes, I, I, was in, I went to Europe. Where did you go from to get to Europe? Well, we we weren't on a ship. And what what city did you leave from? Uh, we left from uh, was it somewhere in uh, was it, uh, where did we leave from? I can't think of the city we left from. But we boarded the ship, which was the Queen Elizabeth, I believe. Did you leave from uh, New York City? No, no, we left from. I think we left from. Uh, Further, further north than Boston. It may may have been from Boston at the time. So you're on the Queen Mary. Yeah, yeah, Queen Mary. Okay. Do you know how many troops were with you on the Queen Mary? That, that I couldn't tell you. Where did you go from the on the Queen Mary from Boston? Yeah, from there we went to. Uh, uh, I think we stopped in, in in London, I believe. Okay, you stopped in England. Yeah, it stopped in England, yeah. And did you get off the ship in Lon in England? Uh, just overnight or, or thereabouts. Where did you go from London? Well, we went, this was, uh, uh, we were approaching uh, D-Day, and we landed in English Channel, and from there we stayed on, you know, I stayed on the ship for a day or two, we start unloading. Then we uh, bring out all, all the equipment so, aboard. So were you in the English Channel while the invasion was going on? Yes, I was. And did you see the landing? I, I saw the landing. Not all of it, but mo most of it. And you could see the uh, the bombardment of the beaches? Yes, I saw the bombardment. And w what are you thinking while you're on board ship? Uh, and you're seeing this going on. I, I was just so confused or excited or and what, or what have you. You were 20 years old at the time. About 20 years old. Were you a little scared? Wouldn't you be? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, as we were uh, was get, uh, going to the shores, after I had taken the, the hills there off of the, uh, at Normandy, uh, then we start uh, for a little while. I be began to uh, I drove the truck, you know, am amphibious truck. Okay. And that and then going back and forth to ship to shore, ship to shore. And I think the next day or two was that then I was just stationed at the motor pool where. I, worked on, on the docks and various other pieces of equipment. Where was the motor pool? Was that on the beach or was that inland? It was inland. Do you know how far inland? No, I don't know. Uh, it was Utah Beach. I think it was, I think, Utah. In, inland from Utah Beach? You, you landed at Utah Beach and went inland? Uh, no, we were, it was in Normandy. Yeah. Yeah, it stopped in Normandy. And Normandy, I think, in, it was a place called La Havre. I think we were in La Havre at one, one time. Okay. Yeah, but I spent most of my time working on equipment, you know, to keep, keep it moving. In the motor pool? In the motor pool, yes. Did you go out of the motor pool at all? No, not too much. Were, were you in any combat zones? No, I was, in, I was not in the combat zone. Not until uh, they had moved up to, uh, to Belgium. And I think they had the, uh, that's where the uh, 
Bo uh, what do you call the it? Battle of the Bulge? Battle of the Bulge took place. Then we supply with Red Ball Express. We would supply, uh, I mean, we would take supplies back and back and forth to the Battle of the Bulge. Well, how long were you in France before you went up to Belgium? Oh, I don't know. <coughs> uh, not, not too long. Not well, too long. Well, tell me about the average day when you were in the motor pool. What uh, you know? What time you'd get up in the day, and what your day was like? Well, there were days sometimes we get up six thirty, seven o'clock, have breakfast, and then I, I'd go back to the uh, area where I worked on on the, the uh, on the equipment. The equipment. Then at the evening, of course, we were in our, uh, in, in other areas around where, where they had assigned us to, in pup tents. And, and we stayed there for a little while. Then they had a large pup tent, and, and our company was, uh, and it was occupied with these big, big tents. So when you first when you first got to the motor pool, you just had a small pup tent. Yeah, well, yes, yeah, small pup tent. Was that a one man or two man? One man. And then you graduated from one man to a larger one, where a group. Yeah. Yes. Uh, how many could be in that larger uh, tent? Oh, I don't know, forty. Okay. Forty-five. You, you sleep on a cot. Yes, I did. You slept on a cot. How was the food there? It was, it was good. It was very nice. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. So we get up early in the morning, I guess about uh, 8, 9 o'clock or thereabouts. Then they, they call call you for breakfast. And uh, you, know, you take your little musket, fill it up. After that, after you fill it up your musket, you uh, sit down, eat, what have you. Then we went about our other chores. Went about your other business, and yes. um, I had a question that just went went out of my mind. Um, what what did you do in the evenings? Did, uh, did you have any kind of entertainment, or did you have any sporting events while you were there? In the oh, we just sat around and played baseball a little bit. Did you? Yeah, played baseball and. Uh, <coughs> What else we have? Uh, play cards and things that I need to check in. You know. Did you play baseball in grade school or high school? Oh, I played. I played a little, a little baseball. What, what yeah. position did you like to play? Well, I got in uh, first base. You're, you're pretty tall. How tall are you? Now? Well, but at the time I was about five nine and a half. Okay. Yeah, five nine. So from from the motor pool there in France, um, how did you get your orders to go into Belgium? Well, from the higher ups, you know. How how many fellows went with you? Uh, that I couldn't tell you. What what unit were you in at that time? What unit? Yeah. What so was the designation of your unit? Four sixty third amphibious truck company. What was that again for? What was it? Tell me again for what? For four sixty third amphibious truck company. Okay. Uh, were you in that same outfit all during your uh, years in the in Europe? In the same outfit. All right. Now. You, you talked about the Red Ball Express. Somebody that's going to be seeing this 25 years from now, tell us what the Red Ball Express was. It, it, the Red Ball Express constituted various company, uh, trucking companies throughout the campaign. Well, it was carrying some supplies by truck here and then elsewhere. Did it just carry materials, or did it carry men also? Well, it carried men also. Okay. Depending upon 
what the circumstances were as far as being able to transfer. Sometimes he uh, had used a, a six by six, or two or three six by sixes to load them up with personnel and would go from here and there and elsewhere. Did, did you ever ride in any of those uh, trucks? Oh yes, yeah, yeah. Just being with the, with the, with the company, would go here and there and elsewhere. Well, now, when you, when you landed in France, we're talking about June of 1944, and the weather, what was the weather like in France at that time? At the time, well, I didn't, I guess, but it's a typical weather, such as you have here in, in, in June. It, pretty mild, it, it wasn't real hot yet? No, it wasn't real hot or oh, cold either. Just normal, normal weather. Now when you went up to, were you stationed somewhere in Belgium or did you go from France uh, up into Belgium? No, we just drove from France up to Belgium. <coughs> now what can you tell us about the Battle of the Bulge? Did you have any uh, involvement in that? And I was fortunate and blessed not to have it, to receive any in the combat at that time. So the only thing I, I knew I just, just drove, the, drove the big trucks, semis, back and forth. Was there a period of time when the fellows that, uh, up there at the Bulge were cut off from your supplies? Uh, not that I can recall. All right. How long did you work uh, in that uh, Red Ball Express and keeping the equipment going? Oh, I couldn't tell you that. Uh, I, re I really wasn't, uh, wasn't too involved in the Express. As I say, my, my duties were to stay in the motor pool and work on the equipment. Keep the equipment moving. Yeah. Now, you, you understand that Patton was instrumental in and given them relief up in the bulge, right? Right. Did you ever meet him? Never did meet him, no. Uh, Never did meet him. What was your rank when you were up there uh, working in that motor pool? Corporal. Still corporal? Mm -hmm. All right. Um, where, where did you, how long were you up there? Do you remember how long you did that? No, I don't remember how long I was up there. Now, did you go anyplace else besides France? Oh. Did you go into Germany at all? I went to, uh, I think I went to up there, what's it, Stuttgart? Stuttgart okay. in Germany. All right. And uh, St. Petersburg, Russia. Did I get up to St. Petersburg? I'm not sure. I'm getting mixed up now. Where it was that? But I know we were in St. Petersburg once, and and uh, Stuttgart, Germany. Uh, I don't know whether I made it to Belgium or not. I mean, to the, uh, what was the wall? Oh, the Atlantic Wall. The wall. One that uh, Reagan had told. Uh, Told somebody said tear down this wall, uh -huh. and that was the wall he was referring to. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, when you were in Stuttgart, uh, were were you uh, just traveling there, or did you have duty there? No, I just traveled there. I believe at the time. Okay. Was, was, did you have? Uh, was that on a leave that you had? It might have been. Might have been on a leave. I'm going way back now. Sure. My memory isn't what it used to be. <laughs> well, you're doing, <laughs> you're doing fine. You're doing fine. Uh, is there anything that uh, that happened in the motor pool or near the motor pool that that sticks out in your mind that you experienced? Well, at one time during the, during the invasion. I was driving there, the amphibious truck, 
and we had been driving back and forth each day. Otherwise, when we'd come off the land into the water, then you go out to the ship, wait to be loaded, and come back. And it made two or three trips back and forth. And then at one time, I had occasion, I think, to move my duck, or the ship was moving. And I started out, and it seemed to me as if uh, I was trying to get around to the front of the ship uh, with the stern or the bow or whatever. And the closer I'd get to, get to the ship, in fact, the ship would be moving. And so one of the sailors went up, up above said, man up below. And had that time, the ship hit me inside, hit me inside, and it uh, dipped up a little water. Then I had to build the plug, I opened it up, and then shot water out there. <laughs> <laughs> so they almost sank you? And I was, and I said, well, okay, I'm go, what I'm going to do, I'm going to turn around and go back to shore. And that's what I did. <laughs> with, with water shooting out here, you know, with the uh -huh. build plugs. And, <laughs> and because so I wasn't about to drown over at that time. Right. Now, were you the only one on on board the duck? Oh, I was the only one on there. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And did you transport just material, or did you transport some troops? No, just material. Just material. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what kind of a uh, how much weight or what kind of a load could you carry on that duck? Well, are you saying? Uh, uh, the net, the netting that that that, that, that carries the uh, big boxes of this and that, one thing and other. Right. But the little little, little and had uh, uh, the the big cranes when they're loading it on ship. You bring up the load, bring it over the side, load up, load the duck, and always put two to three loads on his duck. Oh. Yeah, two to three loads on it. Okay. You take it back to the back to the motor pool, back to the G G depot where we deposited. Well, how many days did you spend going back and forth from the ship to shore? Well, at that time, as I said before, my main duty was to be around the motor pool, and the first two or three days, of course, we we had. Uh, you were transporting. Yeah, just transporting. Yeah. Uh huh. How was the how was the the ocean? How was the sea? Oh, was it, it was calm, rather calm. Okay. Yeah, rather calm. Yeah. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Did the uh, did the military make any temporary uh, docks? None that I knew of. No. Okay. Okay. So. Uh, after your service and taking care of the equipment that was in the Red Ball Express, what did you do next? It was just one thing and the other, whatever I could find to do, you know. Okay, then did you spend the rest of your service in France? Yes, uh, yeah, service in France. But at this time, uh, we were in Paris. Stayed in Paris for a couple months or so. That was before the. Uh, was that before Germany surrendered? Yeah, it was, that was just a little before Germany surrendered. But after Germany surrendered, of course we we just mulled around here and then until it was time for to uh, come home. I'll be shipped back to now. A lot of the fellows. Some of these companies, they left uh, Europe and went to the Pacific. They're part of the Pacific, but we, we were just fortunate. We weren't needed, and so that's why we. Uh, uh, how, uh, that's, that's why I stayed in. You stayed in Europe. In Europe. How did you find out about Germany surrendering? I, I don't know the. It's a haphazard, maybe the word of mouth. Uh huh. Just word of mouth. That's it. How'd you feel about that? I said, well, that's good. <laughs> I didn't know more. I said, this thing is over here, you know. Yeah. Were you expecting to come back home then? Yeah, I expected to come back home. 
Well, while you were uh, while you were in Europe, did your mother and father communicate with you, or did you write to them? At the time, my father was had passed away. Oh, I'm sorry about that. And uh, my mother was she wasn't too good in in writing assistance uh, to write letters and things like that. Maybe I might receive one or two letters, you know, from home, you know. All right. How about your sisters? Did you and, communicate uh, with them? Same, 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 same thing with them. Never communicated too well. All right. Um, dur during uh, a, a lot of the war, uh, there was uh, a lot of segregation between the blacks and the whites. Did you experience any of that? Oh yes, oh yes. So, tell me about that. Well, uh, we were in a unit. We had uh, all white officers, and uh, I can recall one time that uh, we had gone to to the range to a target practice, and uh, at the time I think it was, I only had one black officer, and there was a, a lieutenant. Uh, I think it was Lieutenant Tate, and uh, as I, I was lying on the ground to to practice shooting, when I, got, I had gotten this clip and put it in there in the chamber, and it was put in wrong, and so when I shot, when I made the first shot, all the, all the ammunition just fell out, and I went to the to the uh, uh, Lieutenant, Lieutenant Tate, and told him about it. He said, okay. So he went to his commanding officer and explained to him what had happened. Then he, he wanted to, they wanted to give me another clip. At this time, I was, was considered as a sharpshooter. And because of the fact that I had gotten, that the clip had been loaded wrong, I had to do it all over again, so it gave me a, a mark of, as a marksman. So instead of a sharpshooter, you were a marksman? Yeah, then I became a marksman. Now, what kind of a gun were you practicing with? That's the, what's that, not the old three, but the M2. M1 Garand? An M1, yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, where was this taking place? Uh, which which fort? Uh, that was at Fort Leonardwood, Missouri, I believe. Okay. Um, <clears throat> when, when you went to mess, uh, did uh, did your your black uh, uh, buddies eat together, or did you eat with the white white well, guys, or no, what? At the time, we all kind of kept to yourselves. Kept to ourselves. Somewhere. Uh huh. At the time, we were having an all we were in all black uh, units here. Okay. And it said the only officers that have were white, you know. And that's just, that's just the way it was. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so uh, you're in Paris, and uh, you're just enjoying Paris. Enjoying Paris. And you say you were there a couple of months. Yeah, a couple of months, maybe three or four months, I believe. And did you come back to the States from Paris? Uh, yes, I did. I know being at the Paris at the time, uh, we were in town, in the middle of Ron, and I ran into a long time buddy. Oh. We were all played together. And it was a fellow by the name of Warren Brunt. And we were so elated to see, to see each other, you know to hug and what thing. And so uh, there we were, thousands of miles away from home. <laughs> and had to wait to get to Paris to meet each other over there. And that was, it was, it was, I was just really surprised here to see that. Made for a small world, didn't it? It made, it, just, it sure did. Now, uh, what branch was he in? Was he in the Army too? Uh, 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 yeah, I think he was in there. I'm not sure. I think he was, he was in the army. Yeah, he was in the army. Did you? I couldn't tell you what unit, what, 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 whether he was in the armored, armored division or what have you. Did you spend any time together when well, you met him? Just, just, just went around until later that, that evening. Okay, <coughs> when I separate ways, you know. 
but we're just so elated to all glad to see each other at the time. See. Sure. Mm -hmm. Now, did you uh, have any communications uh, with any of the French people? Uh, later on, we went to a little place there in France, and we met some people, a family there. I met a family there, and uh, it, was, it was the mother of uh, a wife, a wife and uh, a father and his wife, of course, and a couple of other kids. Uh huh. We did, I just spent. I was at the time. I was driving one of their uh, trucks. And it was getting late that evening, so I decided to park the truck on the street, right there where this family lived, because we had known each other, you know, and, uh, and with the French, they were French at the time, uh -huh. and so as about as as about as close I came to uh, communicating with the with the with the French. Well, did, did you have a meal with them, or did you stay with them overnight, or? No, we didn't have any meal, uh -huh. no meal. Did they treat you fine? Oh, very fine. Uh -huh. yeah. How old were their kids? Were they just little, or? Yeah, little kids, little small kids. <clears throat> yeah, little teenagers, perhaps. Did you go over to the arch? Of course, yes, I walked through the arch. Did you? Yeah, I walked through the arch. Uh -huh. Yeah. What what are some of the things you did to entertain yourself while you were there in Paris? Well, did just, you go to the cafes or anything? Yeah, we went to a couple of cafes and, and walked around. I didn't have my camera my camera on me at the time, so I couldn't take any pictures. And uh, so I just relied upon what I saw. And, did any USO outfits come to entertain you? Yeah, the USO. Yeah, they were there on occasion, and I don't remember who they were. You didn't see Bob Hope by any chance? No, I didn't see Bob Hope, no. <laughs> no, I didn't see Bob Hope or none of the entertainers. Uh-huh. He was very, very entertaining. But they'd have a show every now and then. The, the, what do you call it, USO? USO, right. Yeah, USO. <coughs> and that was about it. So from Paris, uh, where did you leave to come back to the U.S.? Uh, let's see, where did I leave? And we came back. Did you leave from one of the coastal cities? I didn't get back to the, back to the U.S. Yes. And I think it was uh, Martin Boston. Okay. And I left Boston to come back. Come back home then. Did you come back by plane or ship? Well, we came back by ship, and uh, we came back, and we were on the USS Waterbury, I believe. Waterbury. Waterbury. And was that a troop ship? Yeah, it was a troop ship. Same. Made it all the way back there on on Waterbury. Definitely, we went in there uh, as we uh, as we. Uh, Made it back to the to, to the shelter or warehouse where all the military personnel met. And one of the first things they did was to give you a quart of milk. Drink anyway. Everybody got a quart of milk because you know you at that time milk was a rarity. You know, I just just wanted some milk and some. Well, and, you know, I, I forgot to ask you, uh, you, you went over from Boston to London by ship. Yes. I, on the way over. Now, did you have any uh, problems? Uh, well, first of all, did you go over there in a convoy or were you a ship by itself? I bet I couldn't tell you, but we were on the Queen Elizabeth. And there's a large ship, you know. Right. And, and I think we might, we might have some escorts. I don't, don't recall. Well, that was back in 44. That was in 44. Do you remember ever having any threats of uh, submarine attacks? No, 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 no. Okay. 
So you come back to Boston and they put you in the warehouse. You have your quart of milk. And how long were you in Boston? Just going a couple of days was it prepared, you know, to come back to the States. When you, where, where'd you go to from Boston? You come back to Cincinnati? I came back to, oh, I've forgotten where it was. Where were you discharged from? Fort Knox, Kentucky. All right. Did, did you come back to Fort Knox from Boston? Yeah, I think I, that's where it was. Or my, or my, uh, Discharge, you'll find that I had a, what they had marked me, had printed in the, uh, a space on there with black or white, you see. And uh, they had checked me off as being white. And so I said, well, so I went, went to the local uh, the recruiter here and noted and told them about what, what had happened. So they said, well, we can't do anything about it, so you have to go back to Fort Knox, Kentucky. <laughs> so, I got, so I got in, in the bus, went back down to Fort Knox, and what he did is to just marked out that. I uh, was it's on here. He marked out the white and yeah, marked the black. Huh? Right, yeah. <laughs> well, uh, then from Fort Knox, did you come to Cincinnati? Yes, I came back to Cincinnati. How did you get home? By bus. Uh, where did you go? Where did I go? Did you go to the uh, bus I terminal? Went to the STD. We go to the bus terminal. I may have been to the bus terminal. No, by that time, your father had passed away, and your, okay. but your mother wasn't in yeah. good health. Right. Did anybody meet you when you came to Cincinnati? No, no, nobody met me. So from the bus terminal, you had to you had to go home. I had to make my way home. Did you take a taxi or did you walk? Pardon? Did you take a taxi or did you walk? Oh well, I might have, might have took a taxi or something, or something similar anyway. Tell tell me about your pay as a soldier. What kind of pay did you get? Let's see, what, what do we do? Was it paying a hundred dollars a month? I think it was a hundred dollars a month, uh, or maybe a little more or less. But uh, when you were discharged, were you still a corporal? Yes, uh, I was getting corporal pay. Pardon me. I was we were getting I was getting whatever they paid for the corporal. For corporal. Yeah. And what was your date of discharge? Uh, January the, was it was the January the second, nineteen forty six, I believe. Nineteen forty six, correct, mm -hmm. correct. <clears throat> so they've got you down here as a marksman with an M one. That's right. Um, now, as far as medals, you were ha you got an American Theater ribbon. Yes. European, African, Middle Eastern ribbon. Yes. You had four bronze service stars. Right. Now, how did you earn those service stars? I, uh, I couldn't tell you. <laughs> just being, you know, it was just, I was, I was just there, and that's this where I earned them. As I said, being a welder, not being in combat, this is what this is the result of it, you know. You got a good conduct medal. Mm -hmm. And you got a World War II victory medal. Right. Well, <clears throat> when you got back home, uh, did you look for work? Well, uh, I tried to look for work. And said, so "What did I do? I worked at the uh, uh, Pennsylvania warehouse where the, you exchange freight from one car to the other." You know. Oh, you worked for the Pennsylvania Railroad? Yeah, yeah. It was on the railroad and had to. It a, they took all the freight. You know what they did? They just rearranged the, the, the cargo. Uh -huh. the comes in. Had, 
had to disperse and a this from this car to that car, this one over here, and that was it. Were you doing that by hand or did you have no, equipment? No, no, we had it by hand. You had your little two wheeler. Okay. Put a little box on it, take me here and to take it over there. How long did you work for the railroad? I don't know. It might have been six months. Then what did you do? And then what I did, I started started school then, going to school then as a, as a welder. And uh, welding and refrigeration, air conditioning, uh, 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 I wanted some sort of uh, a job, a, 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 a doing something that would prepare me for the outside world okay. as, as, a, as a technician, that is, as a, uh, uh, working on the air conditioning, refrigeration. All right. Things of that nature. So where did you, where did you learn that? Uh, was there, a, what, what was the name of the schooling that you went to? Oh, that was not. Was it, was it vocational school? Okay. I think vocational was the same time public vocational. I don't remember. Okay, but it was a public vocational school. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. And when you when you got did you get a diploma from that? <coughs> yes, we got a diploma from that, but but I couldn't tell you where it is now. And how about uh, did that schooling help you to get a, a better job than just working for the railroad? Yeah, I'm working for the railroad. Then I worked there for a little while, and then I know I was uh, working for the Hamilton County. Hamilton County? Yeah, for Hamilton County. Uh, voter registration or something along that line. Downtown, they had an office on Main Street, and for some reason or another, the uh, lady asked me if I would be interested in working around the office there. And so I worked around that office by stacking or restocking the papers and whatnot throughout the state there. And I didn't stay there very long. Okay. Then I was on Main Street, yeah. Well, you weren't using your welding skills, so you wanted to move on. Yeah. What did you move on to? Then uh, it wasn't that and that was taking place in, I think, in 1950. I started working for the post office and as a, as a newcomer at the post office. And then it made me a permanent employee then, see, that was in 1952. And from there I served for about 34, 34 years. 34 years with the post office. The post office. Now, what did you do? Did you deliver mail? No, I, no, I was. I, no, I never did know it wasn't a carrier. I was a clerk. Worked as a clerk for just for, for about a year or two. Then the jobs opened up in the uh, maintenance department. So I applied for it. Kind of got a position in the, in the maintenance department as a mechanic. And wound up after 34 years. And I'll bet your pay was a little better with the post office yeah. than it one with the army, wasn't it? Yes, I think uh, I think I started out with a dollar and thirty-one cents per hour. <laughs> dollar thirty-one cents per hour. Then I wound up being uh, got went up to one sixty-one. And when I can, well, I hear people talking about the earnings they make now is up to fifteen and sixteen dollars. Per hour, I believe now. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know what it is. But that's where I started out. Yeah. Well, t tell me, tell me about uh, your your love life. Did you uh, meet a girl and get married after you came back? After I came back, there was a fellow that one of the, a friend of mine worked over the post office at the time. A fellow named Jack Cunningham. He introduced me to the lady, and uh, we, we hit it off pretty good, you know. Till then on, we decided, well, 
Just get married so I'll marry her, you know. Uh, when did you, what was her name? Louise. Louise what? Fikes. Louise Fikes. Then after Fikes, she, she lived when well, she passed away, 2002. Oh, how did you spell her last name? F-I-K-E-S. All right. Uh, and you, you dated her for how long before you got married? Oh, about maybe a year. All right. Where did you get married? Here in the city, here in Cincinnati. Did you get married at a church? Or? Yeah, in a church. What church did you get married? That was uh, New Hope, New, New Hope Baptist Church. Was, was she Baptist? Yes. Uh, and w did you grow up being Baptist? Yes. Okay. And after you got married, did you uh, go to church at the Baptist church? Oh, yes. We stayed in Baptist, been Baptist all my life. And how about children? Did you have children? We have, we have our one adopted daughter. What was her name? Adrian. All right. Yeah. And how old was Adrian when you adopted her? Oh, she was only about, about two of them. She wasn't six months old. Okay. Yeah. Now, what did your wife do? Did she work outside the home? My wife, at the time, she was a teacher. Okay. She was just at a public school. Did she teach grade school or high school? Uh, grade school. What grade did she teach? What, what, what was it? Second, third? Second or third? Second or third. Uh-huh. Something there thereabouts. Well, while she was teaching and you are working at the post office, were you? Mm-hmm. Uh, who took care of your child? Who took care of the child? Well, she has some friends uh, around here about it. Uh, took care of the kid. Took care of Adrian at the time. Uh huh. Yeah. Well, did uh, did you and the family take any vacations? Oh yes. Where where would you go on vacation? Well, I would go to Paris. Place. At one time, well. The furthest we've ever been was to Africa, and we stayed in Africa. Well, that was one one spot we went. Then we went to California, in California. We've been all over, you know. We loved to travel at the time. Uh huh. And when you traveled, did you drive or fly or? No, we, we uh, on occasion. This part depended upon the distance. Sometimes we'd fly and sometimes I'd drive. What's the first car you ever owned? An Oldsmobile. What year was that? That yeah, was a 19, 1946, 47, somewhere around there. It wasn't until after I got out of the service. Right, right. Remember what color it was? It was a green in color. You remember? No, it was brown in color. It was a four-door brown Oldsmobile. And I traded that one in and got another Oldsmobile and later on. Uh -huh. And from there, it had been one, once in one car, Cadillacs and Chevrolets, Fords, all the way down through the years. What was your favorite brand of car? Uh, Oldsmobile. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Oldsmobile. On any of the trips that you took, did you ever have any uh, car trouble or anything? No, fortunate, fortunate, I was blessed in that sense. I've always had to uh, drove cars, it was always operable, you know, because I tried to maintain it from time to time, you know. Sure. So your wife passed away again, what year, 2000? It was 2002. 2002? Mm -hmm. All right, and what, did she have a, she have cancer or blood disorder? Or? Yes, I, leukemia. Leukemia. All right. Uh, so then uh, I know that you remarried, and what's your present wife's name? What is her name? Yeah. What's her name? <laughs> Lena. L-E-N-A. -E and what was, her, what was her name before you married her? What was her name? Yeah. Uh, uh, what was it? What was his name before I married you? Glenn. Uh, Glenn. Robinson. Robinson. Glenn. 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 Mm -hmm. And 
She had previously been married and her husband died. Yes. And how did you meet uh, Lena? Uh, through, through various uh, activities, you know, sometimes we, we might travel here and there in a group, you know, or, or, or here and there in one thing or the other. She told me that she knew you for quite a long time. Yeah, this, you could, she and I, her husband and I played a lot of golf. Uh huh. And that's, that's how we met. Where did you learn to play golf? Where did I learn? Yeah. Well, here and there, went to Henry. We decided to form a golf club. There were three or four fellows who had played golf for years. And we got to talking one day about uh, forming a golf club. So as a result, I think we're, when we finished up, we had 22 of us, 22 golfers. And as a, as a result, we, we played around in different places, you know. You play all over C Cincinnati? Oh, Cincinnati, I play Cincinnati. You play Avenue, other you know, cities in Ohio? Uh, in Ohio, we play Cleveland. Uh huh. Play Cleveland. I think about the only one we play in Ohio was Cleveland. Did you play out of state? Oh yeah, we went to Atlanta, played in Atlanta. Played in Atlanta? Nashville, Atlanta. I think on a couple of occasions went to Chicago. And uh, just various. Uh, my went to we went to, went to Michigan once, I believe. Uh huh. Yeah. In in the city of Cincinnati, did you have a favorite course? Oh, not particular. If I was a, if I was hitting the ball, that was my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> that was my favorite course. <laughs> All right. So uh, so when did when did you and Lena get married? We did one in 2005 or 2008. So I think about 2005. 2005. So, uh, and um, when when you got married, were you retired? When you when you married Lena, were you retired already? Was I retired? Uh, I think I, I think I had retired. Didn't I? I, th I think you because were. I, because I retired in, retired in 81. Yeah, you and Mr. Lewis. No, when you retired from the post office, did you work any place else? No. Bus driving. Yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, I had to, I worked a uh, school bus. Uh, and we worked at, at Georgia bus for about 10 years. For what school? But on that, uh, Various schools around. I worked for, um, yeah, but there Peter, goes one of the buses. Peterman. Uh, Peterman. Uh, Peterman. For Peterman yeah. Bus Company? Yeah, Peterman Bus Company, yeah. And did you do some of the maintenance on the buses? No, no. You no. just were a driver? Uh, just driver. And you did that for about 10 years? Yeah, about 10 years. Because uh, by that time, I reached uh, 70. And once, uh, once you reach that age, you're out and running. Right they take you off for driving, then you had to become an assistant. Okay. So. Uh, so you could ride on the buses, but you couldn't drive them. No, I couldn't drive them. So um, now you're going to be you're going to be a hundred. Be a hundred in December. And do you still drive? No, no, I've driven now for how many years? Since we've been married. Since we've been married. So you let Lee to do the driving. Years. She does all the driving. All right. <clears throat> what what kind of things do, do you and Lena do for recreation, entertainment? You go to movies or plays or golf or various things. Depending on what's up, what comes up. Uh huh. Dinners, banquets, uh, dances, uh, something along that, along that line, you know. Do you go to any veteran reunions? Vet, no, and I haven't been to a veteran reunion. Oh, what's that? Oh, I have a... Memorial, D.C.? Oh. oh, yeah. Did you do the, uh, uh, oh, the honor flight? Did you do the honor flight? Oh, yes. To Washington? Yes. Uh, 
How long ago did you do that? When was that? Uh, been three or four years ago now. How did you like that? It was, it was nice. Yeah, it was nice. How did you go? Did you go by by train or bus oh, or car? Well, you are you familiar? You familiar with the honor, honor I'm, right now? I'm I'm familiar with it, but I've never what? been on one. You never been on one? No. What what, what did they call all the veterans? I invite all the veterans around the area and uh, set up a time to uh, go to Washington on the honor flight. And, uh, and, and it, it was nice. Just go up early in the morning, look around, see all the memorials, monuments that there are there. Then in an evening, of course, you come back. Somebody yes, sir. Huh? Yeah, somebody had some He had a sister. Well, in years past, uh, I know I had some friends that uh, drove veterans over to Washington in vans, but you went uh, by plane, didn't you? Yeah, we flew from up here and leave in the morning, come back in that late that, that evening. Did you fly out of Cincinnati? Yeah, we flew out of Cincinnati. When you came back, did you have any people greet you at the airport? Uh, not too many. Okay. Not too many. My wife met me there. But that was that was late at night, wasn't it? It wasn't real late. But it's six or seven o'clock, wasn't it? They had greeters in the oh, yeah, greeter, terminal. Yeah. Terminal. Thank you. Yeah, there's a lot of people. Yeah, she said there were a lot of greeters in the terminal. Yes. Uh, okay. But I guess the only one at night. Well, Tom, is there anything you want to talk to Horace about? Lena, is there anything we missed? He had an interesting story about welding Lena, sheets. Lena, would you sit by Pat? Oh, Lord, I don't think I combed my hair. <laughs> I don't have to shoot you. I got to hear you. Oh, okay. He told an interesting story about welding sheets of metal to the trucks or the tanks that would reinforce them to keep from the ammunition penetrating the tanks. Am I telling something that you recall? Right. Tell us about that. At the time, you know, they, the, when the uh, Germans would shoot, you know, they penetrate the, the tank. Sure. And so, in order to counteract that, they had this, to what, they had big plates steel plates about so long and you we had to take uh we had to weld them to the sides other than that to, to avoid the penetration see but you you couldn't do it from the front or back because of the configuration and the armament of the tank right right just on the sides at yes the time. right was the sherman tanks would had the sides uh -huh. up on the side had two big plates and it had to weld all the way around. It was actually to reinforce you. How, how thick was your steel that you were welding? Oh, it had to be the uh, inch and Two or three thing. inches? Yeah. Now, I do have a, a question, Horace. This is Tom. I'm the shooter over here. Um, when the armored units got into the hedgerow country behind uh, the beaches in Normandy, and they'd hit these these hedgerows and get up in the air, and the Germans would fire ordnance under the tank, under the belly of the tank, and penetrate it really easily. The tanks were having a hard time going through these hedgerows, and I've read and seen photographs about the dragon's teeth that were welded to the front of tanks that would help them penetrate the hedgerows and go right through rather than up and over. Mm -hmm. 
Now, did, did your welding unit have anything to do with any of that? That I couldn't tell you. Okay. I could not tell you. It may have been. Okay. Well, is there anything that you can think of that we haven't talked about, uh, either your personal life or your military life? Nothing I can think of. I do a lot of charity work with the Shriners. Uh -huh. What kind of charity work are you doing? Uh, charity work? Charity work, yeah. Oh, we work for, <coughs> uh, you see, I'm, I, I'm a mason. Okay. And uh, we have various activities around, around the city here. And we attend these, these functions, you know. Okay. Yeah. Your church? And oh, yeah, church. You have church activities. Uh, do, you, do you work at a food bank at all? The food bank? No, I've never had the occasion to to, to work for the food the bank. Church. Okay, but but uh, through the Masons and through your, your Baptist church, you do charity work? Through the Baptist church. Yeah. Yeah. And the Masons. Mm hmm All right. How's your health? Today, I know you're. Uh, you got hearing aids. Yeah. And uh, you seem to be walking pretty well, but you have a walker you use. I have to use that walker. <clears throat> All right. Just to feel it better. I don't move around too much now, so therefore, I begin to weak, start. I become weaker in, around my legs now. See. All right. I lose a lot of weight. I lost about 30, 30 some pounds. You know? Wow. One time, you know, put it. I was pretty hefty, but after a period of time, I kind of lost that weight. Just, just uh, I think I weighed 161 pounds. I don't know if Tom can see this. This, this picture we just showed with the arrow pointing, that's you? That's me. And that was taken when you were being discharged? Right. All right. The back of that, the front, rather. All right, it's very shiny, tilted down. There we go, and hold steady. There you are in the front row center. His fingers covering the name. Here's one more. That's good. Here's one more. So uh, this, this is different units that are shown in that photograph mm -hmm. that when you're getting discharged. Right. All right. That's home. That's home. I was at home. One first picture that I take I took when I came home on furlough. Tilt down a little bit, a little more, right there, hang on. 1943. Private first class. 1943. Okay. That's you when you came home on leave? Yeah, right. In 1943? Right. Do you remember where you were home from? Were you home from Lindenwood? Are you home from Chambersburg or where? I think I might have been home from Lenderwood. Might have been home from Lenderwood. Okay. Good looking fellow there. Oh, thanks. I thought so too. <laughs> Horace, let me thank you for this interview and thank right. you for your service. Okay, thank you. And good luck on your 100th birthday. Thank you, and your blessing. Blessing. <laughs>